In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can create a dynamic array, but then we're also going to take a look at how we can actually pull the information from the drawing and do a count and figure out exactly how many items do I have after arraying them. So first, let's take a look at creating the actual array. I have a set of parking spaces here, and I'm just going to begin by editing one of them. And first up, I'm going to add a linear parameter for the width of the parking space. Then I am going to add my array action. So first I'll click on my parameter, and then for selecting the object, I'll just pick everything here. And then when it asks me for the distance between columns, that's currently a nine feet space, and it's in decimal feet. So I'm just gonna type nine and enter. So for now, I'll go ahead and close and save my changes. If I take a look at the parking space, I've got some grips now that I can use to stretch it out. There's a couple things I'm not totally crazy about. One, I don't like that I can move my mouse more than a full space. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that. And then I also don't like this other grip up here that just acts really weird. So I'm going to go back in and edit the parking space. And to fix that, I'm going to select my parameter and open up my properties panel. I like to type CH for change properties and press enter. And then I'm, first I'm going to set my number of grips to one. That'll get rid of that extra grip that wasn't really working right. And then I'm going to set my distance type to increments. And my increment is going to be nine feet and my minimum is going to be nine feet so that I can start with one space. I could set in a maximum, but leaving it blank will let me be able to go from here to infinity if I want. So once more, I'm going to close and save my changes, take a look at my stall now. And as you can see now, I can no longer go a half distance. I can only go full distances for my spaces. And you can also see that there is no additional array grip on this side. So I was recently asked, how can I go ahead and take this and count how many of these items that I have in here? So as you can see, I can stretch a bunch of these out and get a lot of different parking spaces in there, but how do I count them? So the good news is we can do it. The bad news is it takes a little bit of work. We're gonna have to create an attribute with a field in it, and then we're gonna have to extract that information. So let's first take a look at the attribute. I'm gonna edit the block. And inside my block editor, I am going to add the attribute. Now, as I place this attribute, I might not want it to actually show up. I just might want to have the data there so that I can extract it. However, for the purpose of demonstration, I'm going to actually make my attribute visible. But I am going to go ahead and put it in a layer that I've set up that will not print. So if you wanted to, you could go ahead and have your attribute available on screen. It just won't print out. And the good thing is, too, you can actually see if your attributes are actually updating. So that's one thing that I found is I want to make sure that I'm regenerating and that my attributes are updating appropriately. If I can see them on screen, then I know that that is working. So I'm going to go to the Insert tab and define an attribute. I'm going to give it a name. So I'll just call this Space Count. And then for my default value here, I'm going to click to insert a field. And the field is going to be block placeholder and then distance 1. So this is basically going to take that distance value, in this case 9, that it currently is out here. So in my end result, then it's going to come back and report all the cumulative distances of all of my different blocks here. But I actually want to count. So to work around that, I'm going to click on additional format here. And then I'm going to put in a conversion factor. So since my spaces are nine feet apart, I'm going to put in divided by nine on my conversion factor. So one divided by nine. So now it will take the distance divided by nine. So if I have one space, then it's going to come back with a value of one. I'll go ahead and click OK. And OK again. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'll accept my defaults here. Again, you may decide that you want to go ahead and make it invisible so it doesn't show up at all. I'm going to make mine show up, but I know it's not going to print. So I'll click OK, and I'll just click to place my attribute here. Close my block editor and save my changes. Now, I probably need to synchronize my attributes. So I'm going to come up here to the Insert tab and the Block Definition drop down, and I'm going to choose Synchronize. 
I'm going to press enter so that I can select the block that I want to sync. I'll select the block and press enter to synchronize it. And as you can see, I now have the values showing up on each of these. Now, this one looks kind of weird because there's actually two different ones there. The one on the right and the one on the left. So they're kind of overlapping right there. But again, you can see each of the values here throughout. So now if I want to go ahead and stretch these parking spaces out, I'll just grab both of these and stretch them both out at the same time here. The thing about the attributes is I'm going to need to regenerate my screen to get the newest values. So as you can see, this is still set on one. That's obviously not true. So I can type RE for regen, or you can type in regen all if you need to go through a viewport. I'll just type RE and press enter. And now you can see that all of these values have updated. All right, so now I'm going to put those into a table so I can extract all that data. I'm going to switch to one of my layout tabs here. And then once again on the insert tab, I'm going to go over here to extract data. I'll create a new data extraction here. So I'll go ahead and click next. And then you have to save the extraction. That way you can reuse it again later if you want to. So I'll just call this space count, similar to the name of the attribute that I made. And again, that's if I want to run this again, I don't have to go through all the steps. I can just pull this one back up. Go ahead and click next. Then it's going to ask me what things I want to extract from. I'm going to right click and uncheck everything and only extract from my parking stall block and click next. Then I am going to right click and uncheck all again. And this time I'm looking for that space count attribute. There it is. I'll go ahead and click to select that and click next. Now, one thing that I've noticed is um, by default, it's set to combine identical rows. So if you do that, you're not going to get the full set of values here. If I clear the check mark, then I'm going to see all the additional ones. So as you can see, the ones that were all the same size were all grouped together. So if I counted these up, I'm not going to get the correct value. I'd have to take this value times four. But if I go ahead and remove the check from combining identical rows, then I've got each one in its own row. Now, at this point, you can decide whether or not you want to see the count column. You can go ahead and remove the check from the show count column since it really doesn't tell us a whole lot. As I'm learning to play with this, I kind of like it on just so that I can see that I don't have anything grouped together and I know that I don't have any counting problems. But again, that's totally up to you. So I'll go ahead and click next. I'm going to tell it to insert this into the current drawing and I'll just use my standard table si style here. I'll go ahead and place my table on the drawing here. And as you can see, it now shows me all the different blocks and the counts. So here's the trick with updating this table. In order to update the table, you've got to select it, right click, and you can go to update table data links. But the issue with this is you actually have to regenerate your screen before you do this. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to go into model space here and make some adjustments. I am going to change the count on some of these. And I'll go ahead and insert another copy here. And then very important, you can just keep the default value there so it doesn't mess the formula up. OK, now if I come up here and look at my actual fields, you can see that they both still say 25, even though I changed one. And so I'm going to come out here and try to update my table. So I'll right click Update Table Data Links. And as you can see, some of it updated, some of it is still set back to 25. Um, so I actually need to go and regenerate my drawing first. And I'll just go ahead and do it from here. I'm just going to type in regen all. And then I'm going to update my table again. Now you can see the actual values changed. 
So the key point there is you have to regenerate your screen and then update your table in order to get the correct values. And of course, if you wanted to in the table, you can go ahead and insert another row and sum up the ones up above if you would like to do that. So again, in summary, we create the dynamic block that has the array action, and then we add to it the attribute that allows me to count how many there are. And then finally, I can go ahead and extract them, remembering that you have to do a regen and then the updating of the table.